In this video, we're going to give you a quick walkthrough of how to use the vStitcher plugin with Stage. So the first thing you need to do is install the plugin. Now, once you download the plugin, it'll be a zip file. And when you extract that zip file to somewhere like your desktop or put it somewhere where it can have write access and read access, okay? I put it you know, usually on my desktop or in my documents folder or something like that. Um, you put the folder there. Now, once it's there, you go to Edit, Preferences, Plugins, and then you add it here. So what you do is you go add, and then you go to your desktop or wherever you've saved it, right? You pick uh, pick that folder, and then that's all you have to do is pick that folder and say select folder, okay? It says it already exists because I already loaded it. <laughs> but either way, that's how you load the plugin in, okay? Once you have the plugin loaded, you get this plugins right here and this menu about stage 23.2 right there. Um, and this plugin, has a few different options. One of them is open with stage. One of them is open a lineup in stage. One of them is render with stage, stage avatars, settings, and then there's two streaming options too. Now let's just cover these really quick. So open in stage means whatever I have in my window here, I wanna send it over to stage and open it there. Open lineup in stage means whatever colorways I have. So if I have five colorways or whatever, when I say, uh, when I go to the plugin and say open lineup in stage, it's going to export both colorways, put them in stage, line them up together, and show both of them at the same time. Okay, So that's really helpful if you want to see all your colorways together. The third one is render with stage, and we'll go over this in just a second. Uh, this is allowing you to do rendering straight from vStitcher using stage as the back end, and it gives you a bunch of options for that. And then there's stage avatars. This window, it shows you where you can get all of our avatars for stage. We have a bunch of metahuman avatars if I open this up. And all you have to do is just click on the ones that you want and hit download and it will install them over here into your 3D library, okay? Last thing, or the last things here, you've got your settings. And so we're gonna start there actually. This is where you kind of set up everything for your plugin. Um, the options, the main options that you have, uh, we'll go over here in just a second, but plugin settings is really where you want to make sure that you've got something set up. We get a lot of people who are starting using the plugin, they're like, it doesn't export anything, or it, there's no model, or it goes over an open stage, but it doesn't open a model. Um, the reason why is because a lot of times, or when you first come into stage, this will be blank. Um, and that's because it needs to know where are you going to save the, the uh, files that we export from vStitcher. Okay, so as long as you give it a path that you can write to, whether that's your desktop or your documents, whatever it is, just make sure that that is set right there. The other thing is log into your stage account right here. Logging into your stage account will allow you to use the render with stage option right here. Okay, so this is really important to do very at the very beginning. Now let's talk about these settings here for a second. These export settings are important. The first one is include avatar and export. <clears throat> now, that means that when you export or when you say open in stage, it will send the avatar with it. Now, with our metahuman avatars, the metahumans already exist inside of stage. And so what it does is it just tells stage, hey, I'm using the Elena casual pose avatar. So load that one for me, right? But if you're using a vStitcher avatar, like an Oliver or an Olivia or something else that you've brought in, some other custom avatar, it will actually send the data over with the avatar, textures and everything, okay? The, other, the only other thing to be aware of is if you're using Alvanon, uh, it will not send the Alvanon model with it. So even if you have include avatar and export, it's not gonna send the Alvanon avatar with it. But you can choose whether or not you wanna do that. You can always add in a MetaHuman later uh, you can just do this, but if you turn this on and then you send it with a MetaHuman avatar, it will actually open the MetaHuman by default uh, when it, when you send it over. Okay. The second part right here is automatically update in stage. Now this is this is really beneficial in a lot of situations when you just want to make some small tweaks and you want to see uh, it update in stage in real time. That's great. But if you have a really hefty model in here, or you have really high res or really big textures, or especially if you're using this one, legacy export mode, I would highly recommend not doing that because of the time that it takes to export all of that data over to stage um, and the times that it do that. So you change draping, it's gonna resend it. You change pose, it's gonna drape it. You change fabric, it's gonna change it. You just tweak, you know, you, you uh, get in styling mode and you style it a little bit. It, it sends it across. So every little thing, it's sending the data across the stage, which takes up time and has to export and all of that kind of stuff. So I would highly recommend 
only have that on when you're doing like some final tweaks that you want to do. And when you turn that back on to get it over to stage, all you really have to do is click the dress and the finish. And as soon as you hit finish, it'll send that data over. Okay. Lastly, legacy export mode is there to bake all the textures into one giant map. Now this is really beneficial when you're trying to do something that uses like enhanced layer blending like washes or blended textures and things like that. It's a very high resolution map, it's 8K, so you reserve or you preserve a lot of that detail still in it. But if you're not using like washes and, and crazy, you know, uh, blended textures and everything, you don't need that on and you'll get better results because the texture resolution will be even higher, okay? So I typically leave that off unless I'm specifically using something with enhanced layer blending. Um, but those are the main, the main settings, okay? Once you're done with all these, you just say save, it saves those settings for you. So now that we've looked at settings, let's go back into the plugin here and look at open in stage, okay? Open in stage does exactly what it says. It takes this, opens it in stage after export. So you'd click on this, it exports that model. It's pretty quick, okay? And then it sends that data over to stage, opens up stage, and all of a sudden, here we go. It's opening that model. And here we go, this model is in here. Now, if you notice, I had the uh, uh, send avatar turned on. So it knew what avatar to put on there. And now I can zoom in and I can see this outfit on Elena. She's looking around like she's wondering what's going on, but you can see this whole thing, right? So now if I come over, if I have stage open here in vStitcher here, let me actually shrink this just a little bit. Here we go. And let's say I wanted to fix this leg right here, you know, change the draping on this leg. I can go into styling mode. Oops, not freeze pose, fast mode. Turn that off. We'll go into fast mode, okay? And start clicking and dragging, right? Pulling this down a little bit. Oh, let's turn fast mode back on. Okay, I'm just gonna click and drag, get this kind of smoothed out so it's not all jaggy, like that. Okay, like this. Pull these down just a little bit. There we go. Pull them down a little bit there. Okay, then I'm just gonna hit update and as soon as I hit finish, it's gonna send that data over to stage. So it said, oh, a bunch of stuff changed. I need to send it over, sends it over, click on stage, it now opens that model and refreshes. And now I have, well, I should have done a little bit more, but smooth, uh, smooth fabric right here, right? So there you go. So you'll notice like it didn't send the avatar over, but I can click on it and go to MetaHumans, scroll down to MetaHumans, I've got Elena right here, and it's this pose right here. So I can come down here, say, remove, oops, sorry, add it, that one back in. There we go, okay? So now um, I just made an adjustment to it. That's also the same if I go, uh, I want a different colorway. So I load this different colorway in, right? Finishes loading that colorway and it says, okay, I'm gonna send it over to stage, export, click in stage, and there we go. Okay, so really quickly, uh, you can get back to work uh, if something like that happens. Okay, so now I've got this new colorway, it's all, the way I want it, it's all good, I can change color, anything like that, okay? So that's kind of how you do that, uh, the back and forth works. That's with the automatic, uh, I'm gonna turn the styling off. I think that's that's probably why it crashed, is because it had styling on, um, just because it um, interfered. But uh, anyways, I can come in here and I can do my uh, visualization over here. Now, if I want to come over here and I go plugins, open lineup in stage, it's actually just gonna export both of those so if I go open lineup in stage like this, it's gonna export both. I'm gonna actually close this. But you can see it says exporting one of two, it's switching between the colorways. And as soon as it gets both of those loaded, it says done, it opens up stage. And here I am in stage with both colorways right there. Okay, so now I have both colorways in here and I can see them in context of each other. And I didn't have to do that manually but it was really easy to do, okay? All right, so that's what that is. So now let's go to, uh, let's talk about streaming and then we'll talk about render with stage. So streaming, what this is, is if you're using streaming, it allows you to upload just the current colorway to streaming and it'll push it to your online account where you can open it in streaming. Or if you wanna upload all colorways, it will export them each separately, send them all to your account online, put them in a dated folder, and then you can open those inside of streaming uh, while you're in there.
Okay, that's what those are for. So let's go to render with stage. So if I click on render with stage, it's gonna open up this other window. Now what this is gonna do is it's a lot like the render window for browseware, but I can choose, do I wanna render locally or do I wanna render cloud? Now, if I'm, in, if I'm on a Mac and I'm using the plugin, I'm gonna render on the cloud uh, because there's no open in stage, there's no stage install, but I'm gonna render in the cloud. I can pick which colorways I want. So let's just say both, okay? I can pick what resolution I want. Let's just go custom and we're gonna go uh, 1200 by 1200 like this. Pick a default folder. Let's go to the desktop renders stage uh, rendering right there. Okay, renders and then let's pick a scene. Let's do the sweep and let's do mm, let's do uh, butterfly lights. Okay. So now what it's going to do is I'm going to add a still image to the batch. So that means I'm going to add some cameras and I just want the right front, back, left right there. Okay. That's all I really care about. I want to auto frame it, make sure I get the whole thing and I want to include the avatar in it. I don't care about transparency for these, but you could turn it on if you wanted and render with a transparent background. So I've got all those in there and I, I'm going to use all the defaults that I set up up here, right? So these are all the defaults that I set. I'm just going to use those. And now I'm just gonna say render batch. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through those colorways once again, export the files for me. And then it's gonna open up stage in the background and do those renders for me. Okay, so you'll see it here, it starts up. There's my left, there's my back, there's my front, and there is my right. And then it's gonna to switch to the other colorway and do the same thing, okay? So now what I've done is I've basically just utilized Stage directly from vStitcher. I didn't even have to open Stage, it just does it all for me. And so now that it's done rendering, it's just gonna say all done and close Stage, okay? So now I can go to that folder again. Let's see where it's doing, here we go, right here. So now you can see I've got all my images. Here they are, boom, 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 just like that, okay? So that allows you really quickly to go directly from uh, directly from vStitcher straight into uh, stage and render from there. And if the more cameras I set up, the more I can do. I can even do turntables if I wanted to, um, if I had those set up already. And then I could and then I could go into the plugin and go render with stage and you know add an animation video batch right here. Okay. So you can do a lot with this, um, but that's basically the gist of all of the plugin for vStitcher. Um, just make sure that you're in your settings, you've set, you've set up your settings correctly, and that also you've gone into stage ahead of time and set up your lighting the way you want, set all your camera presets, do all those kinds of things so that when you access it from the vStitcher plugin, it's it's just super easy. You just tick some boxes and go. Um, then it'll be really fast for you. So we're excited to see what you can do with it. By all means, uh, contact us if you have any questions, but uh, we hope you have a great time inside of Stage and vStitcher together and that the plugin uh, really accelerates your workflow.